Hey there, friends. Just a quick update on the rifle remedy situation. You'll remember rifle remedy is one of the persons on gun broker who was selling force reset triggers and solvent traps and his place got raided. His place actually got raided in March. Well, I've been speaking to rifle remedy 2000 and I'll just, I'll use that as his name, even though I know his full name based on the documents that he sent me. First of all, we're going to take a look at the search warrant that they gave to him. You'll notice at the very upper right hand corner of the page that it was a 36 page search warrant. Now I've redacted Rifle Remedy 2000's uh, name from above, but you can see that I did leave that he is in Austin, Texas. And I also redacted the VIN number of his 2018 Dodge Charger that they also were listing as a place to file this search warrant. They wanted to search that as well. Um, and I'll get more into that here in a minute, but they were very specific about the apartment being searched and of course the vehicle itself. You'll notice down below that they must not have thought he was much of a threat because they did not want to murder him in his sleep. They checked down at the bottom that they were going to execute that warrant in the daytime between 6 a.m. and 10 p.m. This next file shows a picture of the person that they are going to be looking at. Uh, his face, of course, is redacted along with his name and several other key things like his exact address and all those things. It's no surprise or no secret that he is out of Austin, Texas. Therefore, I just left that information in there because I think that's pretty common knowledge at this point. Next slide, you'll notice that they actually show a picture of the apartment building and they show the actual apartment where he lives. And I blacked out or redacted the number to the left of the door. The thing that I find a bit creepy is the fact that they have pictures of all of this stuff. That means they went and visited these locations prior to serving the warrant so they could obtain these pictures to put in the warrant. Very creepy to know that they were standing outside his door taking pictures of it so that they could include it in the document. On the very next slide, you'll also notice they did the same thing with his car. In order to include this in the warrant, they went prior to submitting the warrant to get that information so they have these pictures and took pictures of his car while it sat in the parking lot. Again, how creepy. Attachment B is items to be seized and searched. You'll notice they say firearms, ammunition, and or firearms, parts, and accessories, but firearms. That being in there alone is a bit of an anomaly because they are calling these force reset triggers and actual machine guns. So hence the stupidity of what they're submitting here. They're actually not looking for guns whenever they say firearms, they're looking for triggers. But with this warrant being specific to say firearms in it, they're interpreting the triggers as being firearms because they mistakenly call them machine guns. But the fact that the word firearms is in here means that if they find any firearms, if they locate any firearms in the property, they can take those as well. Even if it were a Glock 19, that had nothing to do with a force reset trigger or a solvent trap. Ammunition, why do they need ammunition? Is Rifle Remedy making illegal ammunition? Again, no explanation for these bureaucracies doing the things they do. They just put it on paper and they say, it's official now. But they have no grounds or no need to take this man's ammunition. And then they go on to say firearms parts. Hey, there you go. They're actually talking about the trick. The thing they came for, they list third, right? But then they go on to say, and accessories, so they can take whatever else they want. How open-ended is the word accessories to allow you to steal whatever you want from this property, even though you only came for a trigger pack and a solvent part? You know what you came for. You know why this guy is, quote, in trouble with you, yet you steal all his other stuff to send a message. It's all intimidation. You look down to number D and you will see why they need 87,000 new IRS agents because they list tax returns in here. They intend to go after this man in terms of taxes. What they'll do is they'll say he sold X items and these were quote illegal, even though they were legal to sell. They're going to say that this was illegal income. Now, even if this guy gets off, this is the caveat they have here by, by stealing this man's tax returns. Even if this goes to court and this guy gets off for not selling machine guns, it's very likely that at some point, you can find this in pretty much anybody's tax returns. I don't care how good your CPA is, but at some point they'll find one little nugget of something that was not claimed as income. Therefore, the IRS now says, aha, we got you on tax evasion. So even if he escapes this whole debacle and dog and pony show, the IRS is still likely to find something because now they've stolen this man's tax returns. 
Now, I suppose the ATF is looking for something to spend their time with, maybe some dick pics or something like that, because under I, it says photographs, real and digital, like the actual digital ones are not real, <laughs> and or videotapes of digital or electronic video of individuals, property, and illegal activities. Now, they're saying these are illegal activities, so they weren't illegal when the guy was doing any of this purchase or selling of these items. But individuals and property they are telling the courts that they can legally obtain pictures of his girlfriend, himself, whatever. That's not their business. But again, this is the way for them to feel like they're gaining some leverage over this person. Because Rifle Remedy 2000 now knows they got all my private pictures. Now, as much as the federal government leaks these days, and I'm going to use the quotes, leaks these days, this man knows that they may just leak his private pictures. It's not illegal to take what we might consider inappropriate pictures of yourself or your spouse, your girlfriend or whatever, as long as they knowingly are a part of that. It's not illegal to do that. But now they hold, and I'm, a, I'm not assuming that this guy has those types of pictures on his phones that they stole or anything like that. I'm just saying, if there are, now they have this other layer of leverage on top of all that to where, you know, we got some stuff on your phone. Pretty compromising stuff there. Maybe you ought to cooperate with us. Because remember, he didn't give them the passwords of any of this stuff on his computer or whatever. They have to get that themselves. They, he would not divulge that. Moving on to the next page, you'll notice under K, currency, virtual currency. That's all your Bitcoin stuff. I'm asking this question legitimately. I don't know the answer to this. How do they take your Bitcoin? How do they take your cryptocurrency? They have a warrant to seize it right here. Can they go into his account? I mean, what, what authority do they have? What jurisdiction do they have over cryptocurrency to reach out to them and say, hey, I have a warrant for this guy's stuff. I need all of his cryptocurrency. This is new territory here. Uh, they really want all that stuff. They want every single thing that they can find on this guy, paperwork-wise, so that they can perceive and try to patch together some kind of a case against him, even though the premise of the whole thing is fake and false. The next slide you'll notice is what they list on property seized. And I, my guess is there's several other pages to this, but you'll notice they took uh, one iPhone, a laptop computer. Uh, let's see, an AR trigger. Uh, that was a rare breed trigger. Uh, another computer, two thumb drives, another iPhone, another iPhone. Uh, documents, a blue folder and a green binder, another laptop computer, uh, let's see, FA parts and accessories and sites. That's where they uh, took the um, Polymer 80 kits. Uh, and it looks like they're saying they stole seven of his Polymer 80 kits and uh, sites. That's where they took uh, upwards to $3,000 retail worth of uh, six sour sites from this man, pretty much just stole them. And uh, he'll never see that again. Um, interestingly enough, speaking of never see that again, the next page over here is what they sent him stating that, this, well, of course, this is a notice of seizure of property and intention of administrative forfeiture proceedings. You'll notice the date is May 6th. Looking back, they actually raided this gentleman on March 24th. So it took them a month and a half before they actually did their own paperwork. Talk about government. Jesus. I mean, they're slow even on the stuff that they have an erection over. So they send him this information. You'll notice on the third line, description of seized property. It says unknown manufacturer, unknown machine gun, caliber unknown, social, uh, excuse me, serial number none, valued at $380. That's a force reset trigger. Again, in their ignorant ways, but in a way to try to stay in compliance with their own stupid little rules that they made where they call a force reset trigger a machine gun, they are calling a force reset trigger they don't know the manufacturer. We know it's probably a rare breed because that was listed on the previous document. I guess they can't read their own handwriting. But unknown machine gun, caliber unknown. Well, of course, there's no caliber known because it's a trigger pack. It's not a gun. There is no caliber to a trigger. So they're poking holes in their own story here. But oddly enough, like we were saying a second ago, if you want to get this stuff back, if you look below, to request a pardon of the property, you must file a petition for remission or mitigation. So this is essentially telling you what their rules are in order to get your stuff back. 
real quick, I'll just read you a couple of the letters. A, what to file. You may file a, both a claim and petition for remission or mitigation. If you file only a petition and no one else files a claim, your petition will be decided by the seizing agencies. <laughs> so you're going to beg the person who stole your property to pretty please give it back to you. So that's how this works. So do you think he's going to get anything back? Anything. The iPhones, the computers, uh, the parts that they stole, the six-hour optics that they stole, the seven polymer 80 kits. You think he's going to get any of that back? No, he's not going to get any of that back. So that's just a brief update right now. Not sure where all this is heading. I am working on getting an actual interview with Rifle Remedy 2000 to where you can actually hear in his own words the answer to some of these questions. I know you guys have a lot of questions of your own for him. What I would like to do right now is ask you all, if you would, please, in the comment section below, put whatever questions you want me to ask him. I do feel very confident that we're going to have the opportunity to interview him. So I'd love to have some feedback from you guys and know what you want me to ask him when we do have that conversation. Because I do think this is going to be a critical conversation, one that we all need to have. And one that I think a lot of other people are going to be interested in what the outcome is going to be and what his answers might be. Because this is definitely new ground that a lot of people are uh, kind of being exposed to. And unfortunately, I think it's going to be just a growing thing. It's going to metastasize and like a big giant cancerous tumor. I think it's going to continue to grow. And obviously they're emboldened by these actions. The ATF is, and uh, you know, you say what you want about politics, but if the Democrats are able to maintain control of the house and the Senate come November, this is going to get way worse. You think it's bad now? This is going to get way worse in 2023 and going forward for the rest of this wacko's tenure in the White House. This is not going to improve. Uh, the only hope, and again, say what you want about politics, the only actual hope, and it is not a saving grace. You know my, my feelings on Republican and Democrat. But the only actual shred of hope is if Republicans take that because you guys have a voice to talk to them. There's not going to be a Democrat that's going to support anything that you've got to say, but Republicans are just as fearful as Democrats about losing their cake job in Congress, so they at least might listen to you because they don't want to get bounced out on their butts and lose this gravy train that they have. So that's where we have that shred of hope. Not that they care about the Second Amendment or our constitutional rights in any kind of way. They don't want to lose their jobs. So hopefully that's where we have that somewhat shred of hope. I'm sorry, I thought this was America.